Okay, here we are. Uh, it is Sunday. Uh, it is Sunday, 26th of September, evening. And I'm just having a great day today, or night, or evening, or whatever. It's very hard for me to uh, make a uh, distinction between uh, uh, day and night because my, my, uh, my kind of schedule is quite turned on its head. I basically sleep at daytime and, uh, and work at night or evening. But anyway, um, I want to make the, a video about how to live with the artist brain and how my experiences has led me to certain conclusions, how to deal with the artistic brain. But first I want to ask you something and that is to put the notification bell on, to give a thumbs up and to leave a comment and also do that all over my channel with my videos. Just give thumbs up and stuff like that because I really need your help to get into the algorithm. Uh, uh, I had a channel before that was hacked and this one is just, I'm just building it back up again and it is quite hard to get into the algorithm now and my videos are quite long and for some people quite boring probably but for the ones of you who like my stuff please give a thumbs up, leave the notification bell on and because I'm also going to start doing live streaming now, long live streams on my YouTube channel, so if you put the notification bell on, you will be able to get a notification when I go live. So do that. And if you want to support my channel, you can go to Patreon, there's a link in the description, and you can sign up for a dollar or five or fifteen or wherever you want, and it would really help me uh, to yeah, to even spend more time making videos like like my uh, things. And I will also, if you become a patron, I will help you personally to evolve your painting skills. Okay, this aside, I want to talk today about the artistic brain. And the funny thing, I have a, just some days for me are just, I just can't get started. I just can't get into the work because my brain is just all over the place. It is, it is just uh, multitasking on a level you can't even imagine. And that is because I have a typical uh, ADHD, kind of hyperactive, uh, a little bit, tiny bit bipolar and, and uh, hypomania. It's very typical for artists to actually have that kind of brain. It's very typical for scientists, it's typical for artists. And even people in sports on a high level usually have this brain that I would call the warrior brain. It's not a disorder to have ADHD. It's just a genetic adaptation from nature. I'm sure you can find it in other animals too. Some animals are more on than other animals. And uh, uh, we have to remember that we... We are animals and we bear the stamp of a lower origin. So f for ADHD being some kind of disorder, it is just crazy to think about that. Because if it was a problem, uh, nature would have shoved it out of existence or evolution would have shoved it out of existence a long time ago. But in, in uh, tribal society, the old societies, we use this brain to go into battle or to, to hoard food, or to, yeah, whatever, you know. And actually, in the tribal society, 60% of men was killed by other men. So that the homicide rate was actually 60%. So no wonder some people actually have this kind of brain. And I have it. My daughter has it. My mother has it. And uh, it kind of runs a little bit in the family. Uh, but the thing is, I didn't know these things before. So I, when I was young, I was, uh, was uh, working as a welder. Even go further back, I was always all over the place. I wasn't uh, good at sitting still at school. 
I like nature, uh, do nature uh, stuff in school and and uh, stuff that actually had some uh, relationship to to the world around me because I've always been interested in nature and science and and uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, history and stuff like that and my upbringing from when I was a child I remember three things that was really uh, inspiring to me. It was um, the cosmos with Carl Sagan. It was the Amazon uh, uh, series with uh, Devin Attenborough. And uh, 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 the World at War, an English BBC documentary series, which I think is 23 episodes or something. It's really brilliant. You can find it, find it on YouTube, I think. Uh, and this I was all the way back when I was 10, 11, 12 years old, I was watching this and, uh, and it really made me interested in everything in the world. But the problem is, and I, I became quite good in boxing, I became good in karate, I became good in a good welder, I actually welded with both my hands. Uh, but I had to quit because of some uh, issues with uh, some asthma allergy stuff that actually made me... Uh, uh, and we get a new education, so I went into doing art instead. Uh, not because I had done any art before, because I hadn't. So, but I did it as a child, as every other person does. Um, child does, but some some of us are more into it than other. I remember at school, if I got got a, a writing book, and I I got a writing book new one and I thought now this time I'm not gonna start scribbling on it but it took me like two seconds to start just scribbling like uh, you sit there and you just kind of scribble and making making kind of patterns and and then I start to cut into the paper and then I start so these books turned into some kind of artwork within seconds because I couldn't really sit still now, when I was training, and I was training like crazy, I was training like two, two times a day, boxing, karate, or weights, or whatever, and I was working, so I burned the candle at both ends in that too, because I was really, really interested in it. And that is the thing with the so-called ADHD. You become hyper-focused if you like something. But if you don't like something, you, you just can't get into it. And it is impossible to teach me anything I don't care about. If I meet a person I like, I remember his name immediately. If I don't really care about the person, he can tell me his name like 10 times. I won't remember it because it doesn't stick. It's not something I'm interested in. It's just how it is. And it's quite annoying actually because it's, it's not nice not to remember people's names and stuff. But anyway... Last night I was out with a couple of friends of mine and I, uh, I feel really great today. And I wonder why. Because I can usually trace why I feel great and why I feel bad to what I did a few days before. So what did I do right? Well, I've been eating right. I've been fasting and getting enough sleep. I, and I was out last night, sober, and I was dancing with this gorgeous girl with a waist like this, and she had the most amazing hips, you know, I'm just a hip guy, okay? And nice face and everything, and she was thanking me for saving her evening, just by dancing with her. And she went home and nothing more happened, but it was so positive. And I also got some compliments from some other people there. And I, I'm kind of a people person. I like to talk to people and I had conversations, but I also had a nice conversation with a friend of a friend. And he is using uh, mushrooms and he's smoking a lot of weed. And this is the thing he says saved him. And he can't understand why I wouldn't like to use like hashish or, or stuff like that. And I say, you know, the less I use drugs or alcohol, the better I am. The more I focus on the positive things like my painting or my writing or 
creating videos for YouTube and the right amount of training and stuff like that. That is when I feel good. When I eat the right stuff, stay away from the sugar, doing all these things. That is when I really blossom. And today my brain is just so clear because I did everything right for the last days. A few days before that, I really felt like shit. And that was also due to the things I ate and I didn't sleep enough and all that stuff. Now, I'm gonna tell you about my relationship to alcohol in particular, because I almost became an alcoholic. And I used like three years from, I will say from 1989 until the end of art school or about 1992-93 I really started to, to write about alcohol in my diaries and the first time I actually mention it is all the way back in 1993 and I say I had a nice weekend I didn't drink anything and I got a lot done I think it was kind of 92 I could find it actually but uh, yeah but it's not so even all the way back then, 92 I guess, 91, 92, because in 93 I actually had a problem and I had gained a lot of weight and I just drank until there was no alcohol in the ashtray, like three times a week, it was really bad and I was kind of constantly depressed and then I used 20 years to get this under control. And it took re was really hard work. I didn't drink in the morning. I didn't drink like the day after. I didn't drink like that. But I was actually an alcoholic. I could take a bottle of wine and pour it down for 45 minutes or something like that with a couple of whiskeys. And then I went out into the city. And of course, we kept on drinking. And the day after, uh, actually, I, some year, when I started exercising again, in 1995 when I moved to Oslo where I live now I I kept drinking too much but I was also training seven times seven times a week and hard so I could drink like two two bottles of wine or more and then I went to the gym the day after and I trained for three hours just to get myself up again I burned my body to the ground. I had a double hip replacement in 2019 because all of that was really toxic the drinking and the exercise and too much of everything just burned me down. And in the end, it also burned me out. In after I, I really fell in love with a girl in 2011 12 ish, and it went right down very fast. But uh, I was very stressed from before because relationships and I burned as I say the candle in both ends with too much training too much eating too much too less eating I did all the mistakes and in 2012 or 13 ish the lights went out I, I just it went out and I I just felt like I was constantly not hung over, but that, that, that feeling you have when you can't really tap into your dopamine and you can't really get going. And uh, when I started to get out of that, my hips started to make noise and I went into severe pain. And after the, the, the hip replacement, things started to get better. And then some other shit happened in my life which brought me all the way down again and now for the last one and a half years I had just been building myself up again and the beautiful thing the beautiful thing this thing about drowning one more time was the bitch of the bunch it was the thing that left me better despite it has great consequences for me as a person it has left me more conscious than ever. And I guess people who know me would say to me that you've always been quite conscious and quite had a lot, a lot of introspection. But we have to remember there's a layers of introspection. When we th You might think you have it when you are 25, but you probably don't. 
It feels like you have it, but don't. You have to drown a little bit. You have to experience stuff. You have to have some sorrow in your life. You have to, you have to drown a few times. And um, the drowning is so important. The problem with the drowning, though, is that most people who drown doesn't get to the surface again. If you get hooked on alcohol, if you get really hooked on alcohol with this kind of brain, you are basically fucked because only 3%, between 3 and 5%, and that is despite if you get into treatment or not, will not survive it. They just will die with a bubble. And uh, I've seen people who smoked a lot of weed become psychotic. I've seen people lose their ability to work with people who are actually good, really good in painting and drawing and arts and other stuff they did, really good, but I've seen them become psychotic and just lose everything from smoking. And of course, the drinking comes on top and everything. I've seen so much people as a good friend of mine died of a heart attack because he ate too much for 20 years. He was the most beautiful of us all. And he died of a heart attack when he was 41. I would never even imagine that this guy that was so beautiful and so, so nice. And he wasn't even that big, you know, as many people I, I know that should have died long before him. He was also, of course, very unlucky with the hospital they sent him to and stuff like that. But, you know, if you do the wrong thing, it's like Jordan Peterson say, if you keep doing the wrong thing over long enough time, sooner or later, you're going to be dead or in prison or something is bad is going to happen to you. And there will come a time where you have done so many mistakes that there will not be enough time in your existence to actually correct this again. And that is basically one of my fears now as an artist because I really, really spend a lot of time fucking up. And to my parents, which is, has been just so great through all of this, they have been supporting me for years. And um, this, this child, this, this brain that never seemed to grow up, and I thank them with all of my heart for their effort. I mean, as I said to my mother uh, and my father, if I, if I was pregnant with me and I could look into the future and decide if I'm going to have an abortion or not, I think I would have had an abortion. Because this shit, I don't want to deal with this shit. My daughter is much better. She is focused and, and stuff. She has the same kind of brain, but she's has probably more from her mother, some from her mother that leaves her a little bit more kind, uh, kind of in, uh, even now. And that's good for her because uh, also she has me as a good example what not to do. And as she tells me, and this is very nice because me and my daughter is just daughter and father, and she was also one of my best friends. So maybe, maybe despite for my parents and stuff, maybe one, yeah, my best friend in a way, and that's great. She, when she does something wrong, I just say to her, you know, look at me, that's what I did, and this is what happened. And she said, ah, okay, yeah, you're right, daddy, she says. So she actually listens to me, and that's a good thing. Now, to you as an artist, I'm probably talking to artists, if you're a young artist, Stay the fuck away from this, okay? You, you don't need to stop drinking, but don't think that any kind of, any kind of artificial increasing of dopamine will help your art. It won't. What you have to do is to become a Stoic. You have to read Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epicurus and the Stoics and start understanding the thing that took me basically It took me basically until I was 51 to really, really understand. I'm 53 now. Less is more. Less is more. And that is the art of Stoicism. That is the art of living. To come to the point where you really deeply understand 
that less is more. Not when it comes to the painting and the art and the conversation and uh, the positive things of life. But when it comes down to things that increase your dopamine, like drugs and alcohol, food, training, sex, porn, or shit like that, you know, all the things that kind of increases your dopamine artificially, the short buzz or the short dopamine, the quick dopamine, that, that thing that just makes your brain poof. Be careful because real art is to be found when you do incremental work over a long period of time. And that is what gives you the slow dopamine. The thing that makes the artist's brain become more balanced. Because if you start doing this short burst thing, your brain will go like this all the time and you won't be able to focus on the real important things. I use coffee, okay? Coffee is my drug. I can drink enormous amount of coffee every day. I need to have a can of coffee or water and instant coffee beside my bed or I won't be able to get up in the morning. But my brain is wired differently to other people. So I can actually, if my mother is the same thing, if I, if I can't sleep, I can drink a cup of coffee and go to sleep because it evens out my brain. It's like almost like uh, Ritalin or like, uh, like the drugs they use against ADHD. When I are too stressed, and can't sleep or something, I can drink a cup of coffee and it actually evens out my brain. And there are a few people in the world, a few percent of people, 3%, I think it was something, that has a, a, a shorter uh, half, you know, you get it shorter out of your body, you can get rid of it like in one or two hours, the caffeine. Other people may use 12 hours, 8 hours, and they can't sleep if they had a cup of coffee like 8 hours before they are going to sleep. That is not my problem. My problem is just... Well, the, the coffee isn't the problem. Maybe I drink too much for my kidneys, you know? It's not good for my kidneys, so I also try to drink a lot of green tea and stuff like that to kind of even up the thing. So, uh, and to... to uh, to cope with it. The thing that gives me what I need in my life is the right amount of, of training. Uh, I do journaling as often as I can, not every day. And there's some kind of litmus thing to this too, test in a way. There is some, if I haven't been writing for a while, I know that something's wrong. It's almost like if my hair doesn't get curly or it start getting thinner because it's not as thick as it used to be. But when I see it start getting thinner, I'm stressed. There is something wrong. I had, this can be what I've been eating. It can be I'm trained too much. I'm not focused. I'm sleeping enough. So all of these things are so important to, to get into place. I'm going to show you. What I did, well, I actually write with both my hands, so I had two handwritings. And that's funny really, because in school I couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really um, focus really on, you know, I write with my left hand on the, that side and right hand on this side. So, and it's kind of two different hand writings. This one is prettier with the left and this one is faster. I also write kind of less because I'm also a dyslectic. <laughs> so I am a dyslectic with ADHD, some hypermania and, and uh, bipolar disorder. I write with both my hands. I train like crazy and uh, I managed to become a fairly good painter and I'm gonna get even better in my lifetime, I hope. Uh, so, this is also a thing. If I do this before, if I'm stressed, I'm kind of getting my, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting the thoughts out of my head. Marcus Aurelius uh, wrote, um, 
his meditations, uh, the Emperor Marcus Aurelius wrote meditations, and it's some of the most profound Stoic writings in history. He didn't even mean to that people should get to know this or, or read it. He did it for himself. Now, I, I was going to show you some stuff I used to do because I used... I can really find it now. Let's see here. Anyway, what I used to do when I was drinking too much, I was actually writing down everything I was drinking. I was writing down, uh, yeah, yeah, it's calendar. I had calendars where I crossed off how much I had been drinking and the days I didn't drink. That was how much I had to do. I also have, have, uh, <laughs> have uh, other books where I wrote down every calorie because I tried to do calorie restriction, which is a very bad idea because you're going around and being hungry all the time and you can't really lose weight, you only lose, uh, lose, uh, uh, you lose uh, muscle and some fat, but it's not a good thing. What I'm doing now to cope with this brain, I want to also tell you what I'm doing when it comes to this regime. I do some breathing techniques, the Wim Hof, um, the Wim Hof um, uh, method, and I do intermittent fasting, and some days I don't eat at all. I even do some three day fasts once in a while just to clean up everything in my body and do a reset. It's really good for the brain. There's really good science that shows that this is, this is a good thing. I also stay away from sugar as well as I can. Uh, sometimes I really don't seem to be able to stop myself, but I, I, it's getting better and better and better. So what I'm eating is nuts, fish, eggs, meat, uh, vegetables, a tiny little bit of fruit, not much because it's too much um, sugar in it. And I lead basically, uh, I eat basically between one or two meals a day so I can get the most out of my brain. Because when you're doing art, you need the blood to be in your brain not in your stomach. So if I can paint hungry, because when you start doing intimate fasting and you go into ketosis and burning fat, you, you don't get hungry anyway. So it, now it's like 17 hours since I ate the last time, I'm still not hungry. I'm gonna go all the way to tomorrow morning, I'm gonna work for like eight hours, then I'm gonna have my first meal. Because now all the blood is in my brain and I feel high. And I'm not, I haven't been drinking, I've been using drugs, I've just been sleeping right and doing all things right. So try to do, go for intimate fasting. And as an artist, and this is my advice, it's coming to an end now, this video. As an artist, remember to stay healthy. Remember to, as I said, don't use short buzz to fill up emptiness inside you. Use the art to do it. And for heaven's sake, you have a brain and you have a body, and this body is made of spare parts, it's made of all the elements. And to get, to build body, you need elements, you need nutrition, you need all these things to keep it up and to keep your neurons in your head working right, all that. So please, as a young artist, be healthy. You don't want to fall. You don't want to do like me, because most people that lead my life do not survive it. They do not pick themselves up and get better, okay? They, lose, they, they fall. And most people I've seen doing my mistakes didn't make it, okay? It, I'm not saying I made it, but at least I'm still here, and I'm healthy, and I'm getting better as a human, as a painter, and I feel better and better and better despite being on the water for a very long time. I don't show it on Instagram and every social media, but that is how it's been for me for the last years. And now I'm just on the up and up and up and up and up. So, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. 
uh, stay cool until next time. There's a lot of videos coming out now, so I hope to see you in the next video. And I hope this was helpful. Cheers. Goodbye.